This week, we already had some interesting information drop from Joe Blackburn's Twitter talking about the future of PvP. And while personally, I think it's good that they're finally talking about some of this stuff, I would not argue with those making the notion that A, well, you can't really trust too much of what they're saying, you know, after that whole renewed focus on PvP nonsense. And of course, it might be a case of too little too late in that we're only getting new maps the season after next season and it's going to be return or revised maps and then it's going to be a new one two seasons from next season and all of that kind of stuff. I, I definitely understand the frustration there and I share quite a bit of it. But in last night's TWAB, we also got a lot of information about some upcoming sandbox changes that I feel well, some of which are really warranted. We've got a lot of light subclass buffs that are coming, and I wanted to talk about a few of them in this video. What's going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link. And indeed, the issue of This Week at Bungie, the Bungie Weekly blog this week, contained a lot of really interesting information about some buffs and nerfs that are coming to abilities, to certain subclasses, and all kinds of things in Season 15, which again begins on August 24th. There's going to be some melee ability changes. They're nerfing sliding for some strange reason. And we're even getting some other nerfs to the way uh, stasis freezes players. And I think a lot of that is really good. In particular, some of the stasis buffs and nerfs, I think, are really warranted. We'll start with stasis freeze. Frozen players can now initiate breakout while airborne, shorten breakout animation, and camera transition. This means that once you decide to break out of being frozen, you'll be able to fight back sooner. And they've differentiated the long freeze, which happens when you get frozen via a super, versus a short freeze, which is everything else. They've uh, differentiated the visual treatment to make each status easier to identify. That's great. Break getting frozen in this game is one of the most frustrating things, being able to break out of it even faster. Good news for me. But after that, they talk about a nerf to sliding. While sliding, players will now incur the following weapon penalties. Minus 20 stability, plus 15% shotgun pellet spread, and 1.5 times flinch. Meaning you sliding, slide shotgunning, slide shooting, slide fusion charging, all that kind of stuff is going to be really heavily nerfed next season. I think the minus 20 stability was enough, but adding a 15% to shotgun pellet spread, which is basically going to make your pellets quite a bit more inaccurate when you're slide shooting, and adding that 1.5 times to flinch seems pretty heavy-handed when it comes to nerfing. And while I can understand some people are annoyed with slide shotgunning with the overall state of shotguns in Destiny 2, I, I wouldn't have pegged that as being one of the major problems in the Crucible. And it's not, and you know, people are making the argument that slide shotting is a part of the skill gap and the skill ceiling in D2, and that's certainly... That's certainly uh, true on a lot of levels, but slide shotgunning is like baby's first advanced technique. It's literally you just pressing the crouch button when you're running before shooting. But it is really odd to me that they're focusing on this to nerf. We'll have to see how these changes play out when Season 15 goes live. But generally, when Bungie tries to make changes that lessen the overall movement options in Destiny 2, makes them less viable, I'm usually not a fan of that, and that seems to be the case here. Anyways, let's move on. We've got a lot of subclass changes coming up. First off, Rally and Regular Barricades are seeing some major changes. For Rally Barricades, standing behind a Rally Barricade will now provide the following weapon buffs. Plus 30 stability, plus 10% range, and minus 50% flinch. That is massive. If you remember the old Gorilla Fighter perk from Destiny 1, this is like adding a supercharged version of that to Rally Barricade. Great change in my opinion. Next, we've got some changes that are going to affect all Titan Barricades. Players moving at high velocity will now take more damage when moving through hostile Titan Barricades, meaning you're going to get punished more for just running through those things. And Barricades now slightly protrude into the ground to protect the Titan's feet on uneven ground. This is to protect you against explosive attacks on uneven surfaces, kind of going underneath your barricade. Not a bad list of changes at all. Next up, we've got changes coming to the Titan Behemoth for Cryoclasm. While equipped, Base Slide now shatters crystals and frozen enemies. They've increased the duration of the screen effects, notifying players that Cryoclasm's long slide is ready from 1 second to 4.5 seconds. Incredible. Uh, in Shiver Strike, they've increased the movement speed by 25%. Fantastic. And Whisper of Rhyme. They fixed a bug where the overshield provided by Whisper of Rhyme was not scaling precision damage correctly. So in kind of a surprise move, Bungie feels they've overdone some of the nerfs on Behemoth, and they're giving some of those movement options back to the class. Real happy to hear about that. 
Next up, we've got Sunbreaker for Middle Tree Throwing Hammer. They've increased the time before the hammer explodes after hitting the ground from 6.5 seconds to 10 seconds. Great change. And they've increased the damage with it versus powerful PvE combatants by a whopping 50%. You're going to be dealing way more damage with your hammers in PvE, and you're going to have way more time to use them. Two fantastic changes in my opinion. Next up, we've got changes coming to Bottom and Top Tree Striker. For Fist of Havoc, they've increased the slam detonation radius by 14%, reduced the slam damage falloff, and reduced the slam attack activation cost from 21% to 18%. That's a decent series of buffs for Striker as well. Then, for Middle Tree Striker, I was worried they were going to nerf the Yeet Titan, but not yet, at least not quite yet. Instead, they're giving a buff to Inertia Override. They've increased the duration of that ability from 4 seconds to 6 seconds, and sliding over an ammo brick now grants you 20% melee energy. Great change. Alright, lastly, of course, we've got the Titan Sentinel. What's changing with that? Well, Ward of Dawn is going to be seeing a bit of a change to the way that bubble works. With Ward of Dawn, they've increased the damage taken from bosses from 0.25x to 7x at zero resilience, and damage taken can now scale down to 0.25x based on the owner's resilience stat. What does this mean? Basically, it means the strength of your bubble is now going to be completely reliant upon your resilience stat. You can remain, you can have a bubble that is just as strong as the one we have right now before the update goes live, but you're going to have to bump your resilience up probably to near max in order to get that. From now on, if you move forward, if you're playing a Titan who has zero resilience, your bubble going to be weak AF, bruh. Which is an interesting change that I would decry if it wasn't for a change that they're going to be making to Well of Radiance, which we'll be covering in just a few minutes. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the changes for the Hunters. For Revenants, Silence and Squall is seeing a buff. They've increased the Squall movement speed by 20%, and the Squall Storm now stops when it touches a boss. Have you ever thrown your, your Hunter Revenant super at a boss and like it just hits them and then moves out and goes off to chase like a drag or something? That's not going to happen anymore. Once it makes contact with a boss type enemy, it's going to sit there and trap them in it. Great change if you ask me. Then, Withering Blade. They've increased the projectile speed and tracking by 10%. Again, Bungie feels they overdid some of their nerfs to the Hunter Revenant, and they're pulling back on some of that here. Alright, moving on to Middle Tree Gunslinger. Knife Trick has had its duration increased from 3 seconds to 4 seconds, so you get a bit more time with that ability. Then, for Top Tree Gunslinger, Six Shooter is seeing a pretty good change. Damage falloff will now start at 25 meters instead of 20 meters, so you're going to get a bit more range back on Six Shooter. Not bad at all. Then, Arc Strider is seeing a huge litany of changes. A lot of things are getting buffed on that class. First up, Arc Staff. They've extended the passive super duration from 16 seconds up to 20 seconds, so you're getting 4 more seconds in your super. Great change. Increased the heavy slam detonation radius from 5 meters to 6 meters. They've increased the damage versus PvE combatants by 33% as well. Great changes all around. Then, for Top Tree Arc Strider, Deadly Reach has had its duration increased from 8 seconds up to 10 seconds. And then for Middle Tree Arc Strider, this is seeing an amazing change. It's really something that should have been a part of the class as soon as Middle Tree Arc Strider was introduced. But Lightning Weave, dealing damage with Tempest Strike, will now trigger Lightning Weave. And the timer can be extended by dealing damage with any weapon. Fantastic change for Middle Tree Arc Strider. It's something that's actually going to make me go back and play that class. Good stuff. Alright, after that, we've got some changes coming up to Spectral Blades on the Night Stalker. They've reduced the damage reduction during Super from 52% to 47%, and reduced the additional damage reduction when invisible from 5% to 3%. So amongst all of these major light subclass buffs, Bungie identified the Spectral Blades and says, mm, that class is still a little bit strong, so they're taking down your damage resistance a bit, which means you're going to take more damage from enemies. Alright. That's it for Hunter Changes. Let's move on to the last class, of course, the Warlocks. Starting with Shadebinder. Whereas Hunters and Titans had their stasis subclasses buffed, Shadebinder is only allowed to get nerfed. <laughs> Here's what's happening to Winter's Wrath. They've reduced Shatter Pulse damage versus close range supers, and the Warlock must now freeze and shatter twice to defeat players in Burning Maul, Fists of Havoc, Sentinel Shield, Nova Warp, Arc Staff, or Spectral Blades. However, 
Glacial Quake still only requires one Shatter to defeat, so a lot of those other roaming supers will now be able to survive the Winter's Wrath super. You're going to have to freeze them with Winter's Wrath and detonate them twice, I guess, to break those other roaming supers. Which is an interesting change. I suppose I can somewhat understand it. Shade Binder was really effective at shutting down other supers because you could freeze them instantaneously with a, a melee that basically travels a super long distance. But it is a little sad to see the Shade Binder continuously over and over again getting hit with the big nerf stick. Alright, let's move on because that's not the only thing getting nerfed. Top Tree Dawnblade has been one of the top tier Crucible classes for a long time. And of course, it's going to be seeing some changes here. Although, we are getting a couple of buffs to mix out some of the nerfs with Top Tree Dawnblade. In particular, Bungie's going to be issuing some pretty decent buffs to the Heat Rises ability while nerfing stuff like Celestial Fire and Icarus Dash. Let's dive into it. First up is Celestial Fire. They've reduced the tracking cone angle and the arming shape, which is the proximity detonation for that melee, now shrinks over time. So the longer that melee travels, the less likely it is to detonate on the right target. They've also reduced the detonation size by one meter and damage fall off has been increased at short distances. Meaning, Celestial Fire is seeing a pretty moderate series of nerfs here. Next up, we've got changes to Icarus Dash. Now provides one air dodge every four seconds, but while under the effects of heat rises, increased to two air dodges every five seconds. I'll comment on that after we talk about heat rises. So here's the changes for that ability. They've increased the duration from 10 seconds to 15 seconds, increased the time extension awarded for air kills while heat rises is active, the extension duration will differ based on the type of enemy killed, and your location now appears on enemy radar when using heat rises. This is why I wanted to wait until we talked to about heat rises, because a lot of people are probably going to be mad about the Celestial Fire and especially the Icarus Dash nerd. But... The buffs that Heat Rises is getting are pretty solid. An extra 5 seconds for that perk being active is great, and now you can extend the time uh, differently based on the type of enemies that you kill while in the air. Great changes. And I, I would normally be very, very upset about the Icarus Dash change. Basically taking it says you can only do one air dodge every 4 seconds would have really sucked if Bungie just left it there. But essentially, while you're under the effect of Heat Rises, you're going to have those two air dodges every five seconds. So Bungie is really trying to focus this class towards mid-air combat, but taper it down a bit from the, the levels of highs that it's at right now. And I, even I have to agree. Top Tree Dawnblade is the top tier PvP class right now. It is just super duper powerful. But it's not the only changes we're seeing. Middle Tree Dawnblade is also seeing a change. This is Well of Radiance. They've increased the damage taken from bosses from 0.25x to 1.5x at zero resilience, and damage taken can scale down to 0.25x based on the owner's resilience stat. Note, this refers to the Well of Radiance itself and not the players inside the well. This is just like the Ward of Dawn. The strength of the Well of Radiance uh, is now going to depend upon the user's resilience stat, just like the strength of the Ward of Dawn. They've also increased the damage resistance buff versus enemy players from 20% to 40%, great change, and players inside Well of Radiance are now immune to stasis freeze and slow. But the Well Sword can now be frozen and shattered by stasis. Really interesting changes overall there. So if you're a warlock moving forward and you want your well to survive, bump up your resilience stat, which isn't going to bother me too much. I generally run a high resilience warlock anyway, especially when I'm doing the well of radiance, and that's going to be uh, that's going to be the way to go moving forward, so that my uh, my well sword doesn't get blown up immediately. Interesting changes. All right, next we've got changes to Bottom Tree Dawnblade. Phoenix Dive. They've reduced the delay before the dive starts, and you can now input a direction to dive in that direction. Then, Igniting Touch. It's getting an ability rework. Solar ability kills and kills on burning targets will now cause targets to explode and burn other nearby targets, who will also explode if they happen to die while burning. This is fantastic. You set one enemy on fire with the igniting touch. They die. They set everybody else on fire. And if they die, they blow up and <laughs> it keeps the chain reaction going. I like that. All right. After that, we've got changes to Chaos Reach in the Middle Tree Stormcaller. They've increased the beam environment collision size to better match collision size with damage size. 
They've reduced the beam damage radius in PvP by 20%, and they've reduced the beam endpoint sphere radius in PvP by 33%. Basically, these are changes focused on PvP to kind of help keep players who are hiding behind objects from still being killed by Chaos Reach. That still happens. All right, next we've got bottom tree storm collar changes. Some good stuff here. Arc Soul is seeing a buff. They've increased the duration from 12 seconds to 13 seconds and increased the rate of fire by 10%. Great all around. After that, we've got changes to electrostatic surge. Now increases sprint speed when allies are near. And finally, landfall. Now fires five arc ground projectiles on cast. Hopefully that makes the landfall build worthwhile again. It really hasn't been great since like it was introduced in year one. After that, we've got some Middle Tree Voidwalker changes. Finally, some Nova Warp buffs. Nova Warp, seeing increased damage versus PvE combatants by a monumental 73%. This is an amazing change for Nova Warp in PvE, which generally just tickled enemies in the uh, PvE environment. It also no longer slows movement speed while you're charging or charged, and now detonates on cast. Incredible changes, really happy to hear about that. But it's not the only thing seeing a buff. Handheld Supernova is getting buffed too. They've increased the damage versus PvE combatants by 100%. It's doubling its current damage. And they've increased the hold time from 2.5 seconds to 3.2 seconds. Which basically means you'll be able to hold on to that pocket Nova for a little bit longer. But alright Guardians, there we go. That is the lion's share of PvE sandbox changes coming in Season 15. Well actually, they say that there's even more changes coming, but this is all the ones they told us about in last night's TWAB. There's some really interesting stuff in there, very happy to see so many of the light-based subclasses getting the buffs that they so richly deserve in this stasis PvE environment. It's nice to see the light subclasses getting a little bit of love. But anyways, those are the changes, those are my thoughts, be sure to leave me yours down in the comment section below. Did you see some buffs that you liked? Did you see some nerfs that you don't like? Be sure to let me know. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. But I'm out for now, thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I am Blacklink, you guardians stay frosty.